If you're confused on what should I be doing for my cardiovascular training, how hard should I be working, and what should my heart rate be at, this is the video for you. We're going to be calculating the Carvonin method way of understanding your zones. Before we get too deep into it, I do have a packet that I include for the entire cardiovascular playlist that I am building that will walk you through every calculation, every specific cardiovascular number that you would need to know for yourself that you can access in the description below so you can just follow along to the entire playlist. If the entire playlist is not done yet it is because i'm still working on it but otherwise if you're in the future it's all done and it's all ready for you so if you haven't already watched my other videos on zone training you might want to check that out just so that way you can kind of understand the why behind these calculations if you haven't already seen it and if you don't already understand what the theoretical maximum heart rate is you might want to watch that video too to get a better understanding if you don't want to i will do my best to explain in this video so why would you use something called the heart rate reserve method to calculate the specific ranges of heart rates per zone that you should be using. Well, the heart rate reserve method, also called Carvonin method, is special because it actually takes into consideration your resting heart rate. Now, why would that be important? Well, let's walk through a brief example of why that would be important. If you have an individual that is not particularly physically fit and is possibly sedentary with poor cardiovascular fitness, let's say they have a resting heart rate that is in the 80s or even in the low 90s, that is a resting heart rate that should be taken into consideration in the formulas to understand how that individual should be training for their heart. Let's say you have someone who is very physically fit and has excellent aerobic capacity. That person might have a resting heart rate maybe in the 60s or maybe in the high 50s. That's an exceptional resting heart rate for a physically fit person. That resting heart rate should also be taken into consideration for the calculations for this person who will need a very different cardio program than per person A that we previously mentioned, who is sedentary and not physically fit. If you just calculated your zones or your heart rate zones that you should be training in using simply your theoretical maximum heart rate only, and just multiplied that theoretical maximum heart rate by the specific percentages that lead to the ranges of heart rates for your zones, you're missing a big factor of the equation. Those numbers would be exactly the same for person A who is not physically fit and person B who's extremely physically fit. It's just not right. So that's why they have the heart rate reserve method or the Carvonin method to give much more accuracy for the different types of people that are out there. So let's get started with those calculations. If you have your packet with you, you may already have been jumping ahead filling it out. But otherwise, if not, grab your napkin and let's get started. Who doesn't write on napkins? I write on napkins. Step one, take your theoretical maximum heart rate and subtract your resting heart rate from it. If you don't know about either, this video has theoretical maximum heart rate and resting heart rate. Once you subtract your theoretical maximum heart rate from your resting heart rate, that will give you the heart rate reserve. So save that number because we're gonna use it. As we go through this video today, I'm gonna have two examples that we're going to be doing. One for a physically fit person and one for someone with a higher resting heart rate or less physically fit. Person A will be less physically fit and person B will be physically fit. So in this example, person A has a resting heart rate of 88 and they have a theoretical maximum heart rate of 191. 191 minus 88. Person B has a resting heart rate of 64 and their theoretical maximum heart rate is 191 beats per minute also. 191 minus 64. So now we've got the heart rate reserve numbers for person A and person B and you have yours. One way for person A and person B alike and you to measure your heart rate during exercise in a much easier way than just taking your pulse is to use something like an EKG based heart rate monitor like the Polar H10. This one is waterproof and it's EKG, which is much more accurate than the light based systems that are used by wrist based watches as well. If you're interested in getting a chest strap heart rate monitor for yourself to accurately assess your heart rate, check the link in the description below and I actually have a link for the Polar H10. Step two is the last step. And this is just calculating your percentages based on your zones. For simplicity purposes, I'm just going to explain to you the simple calculations so that way you can go through your packet and just fill out the numbers. But otherwise, be sure to check out the video on zone training because I explain the numbers, your target percentages, all in that video. So for your target percentage, it's simply in parentheses, your heart rate reserve number times your desired 
percent intensity, which is your percent of your theoretical maximum, and then plus resting heart rate. Notice that the heart rate reserve and your desired percentage is in a parentheses. So those two numbers need to be multiplied first. Remember your order of operations. Then you can add that number to your resting heart rate. That final number that we just calculated, therefore, would be your target heart rate in beats per minute for that specific desired percentage. For simplicity purposes, I have calculated for person A all of their specific zones based on the percentages that I have in that video for zone training, and I've done it as well for person B. If you look at the two sets of numbers for each of their zones, the numbers are completely different. This is much better. We want the numbers to be different because these are people with different lives and different backgrounds and different activity levels. If we didn't use this Carvonin method or the heart rate reserve method, those zones would be exactly the same. Identical. Doesn't make sense. One thing about person A and person B that is similar is that they would both greatly appreciate it if you would hit the like button if you're enjoying this content. Thank you so much for doing that. They appreciate it and so do I. Now one note I'll leave you on is for that less physically fit person, person A, they should be targeting more around the zones one and two and mastering it until their heart rate starts to recover rapidly back to their resting heart rate. That physically fit person on the other hand may end up benefiting from spending a bit of training in zone five they don't have listed, but I mentioned in my zone training video. Video. If you want even more information on program design and cardiovascular fitness, I've got this entire playlist on cardiovascular training that would be perfect for you. And if it's not all there, I have this video that might be perfect for you because it means I'm still working on this.